Let's look at how to apply the predictive coding method to the case where we have a, a lossy compression. So here um, we're going to not uh, send all the exact error values um, that we got from the predictor, but we're going to quantize them. Uh, we're going to discard some of the small ones or maybe represent them using fewer bits. So in that case, um, we can't reconstruct the image exactly because um, these errors uh, are not the true errors and the, uh, the, the recovery method is going to accumulate um, mistakes in that. So it's fairly easy to fix though. We just um, pre-account um, for these accumulated errors by uh, an additional predictor loop here. So we take our, our true error and our quantized error, we predict what effect that would have on our, um, on our, on our error here, what this thing would do with it, and then we can, we can basically um, uh, adjust the prediction to account for that. So that does um, compensate for this uh, error buildup. Um, another thing to we can do is to not if we if we want to represent a um, input value with a small number of bits um, instead of just dividing up the interval into equal intervals um, we can choose uh, variable intervals and the reason we'd want to do this is if we know that our values are clustered around zero then we want to use more of our output space near there. So, so this, this kind of shows that. Here's our input called S, right? It's continuous value. And we're going to quantize this into some discrete values of output called T1, T2, et cetera, up to T sub L over 2. So anything between 0 and S1 is going to be output as a T1. Anything between S1 and S2 is output as a T2 and so forth. And so um, we're using a lot of precision near zero because these intervals are small. But when we get out here, you know, we don't care too much. So anything in this big interval gets quantized to the same value um, of output. So that's called Lloyd Max quantization. And it's optimal for uh, in the case that we have um, input values that are clustered around zero. For example, that have a Laplacian PDF uh, probability distribution function. So we pick the number of bits we want. If we pick two bits, that means we want four output um, values. Let's say t minus 2, t sub minus 1, t1, and t2. And in that case, we'll assign t1 to be to cover anything between the input of 0 to 1.1 and we're scaling everything to the sigma of this PDF. Um, anything above 1.1 even out to infinity gets assigned to the output value 1.81 and you can you can do this for, for variable number of bits um, we chose the case of um, four levels or two bits if we wanted eight levels or three bits um, we would actually have um, eight intervals as shown here. So this is, uh, we can do even better than, this does even better than that straightforward devising by, dividing by a constant factor. Okay, finally I want to look at uh, the compression of image sequences. Kind of uses the, the concepts we've already seen for um, still images. Um, but here we want to take advantage of the redundancy between successive frames, so temporal redundancy. So we expect that a pixel does not change that much from one image to another. And you can see that in this example. Here's a little movie. Um, I'll just reduce the volume there. So this movie, um, as you can see, most values don't change very much. Occasionally we have uh, large jumps between the scenes or uh, little little variations like this. But you know this gives us an idea that temporal uh, taking taking advantage of temporal redundancy 
um, would be very helpful. Um, so this particular movie um, has 800 color frames. It's about a minute long. Original size uncompressed is five gigabytes, but using the methods that we'll show here, we get it down to 45 megabytes, so about 100 to one. So again, we'll predict the value of each pixel and transmit the residual error. Um, the simplest way is just that the value of each pixel in the next image is the same as the value in the previous image. So that's called forward prediction. We will um, peri periodically insert uh, independent frames, which are compressed as single images, um, to avoid error buildup. So we have to use this to initialize the whole sequence but then we'll periodically, like every second or so, insert these iframes. Finally, we can also um, base the prediction on the next frame uh, and do backward prediction. To improve the um, predictive coder, we can estimate the motion um, based on some previous data. So for example, we look at a little patch and we look how it's moved over time. And we can say, OK, in the next image, it's going to move to here if it keeps on moving at that rate. So, um, so then the, the, prediction will be the, val the prediction will be the value here based on where it was over here. Um, and this does improve the, um, the predictive coder. So here are two images in that sequence. Um, mostly, things have not moved a lot. Um, but here is the error if we do not use a motion compensation where we don't predict the motion. Um, and here is the error where we do predict the motion. So standard deviation is much lower here than here. And this just shows the motion vectors that were estimated in order to compute this. We can also even um, estimate the subpixel precision of those motion vectors um, to half, quarter, etc. Uh, precision. And that does improve the standard deviation of the error, gets that even lower, as you can see. And finally, this just shows um, various com video compression standards and their uh, features, what they do. As you can see, um, we've seen a lot of these elements now the uh, precision at which they compute um, motion to one pixel or half or a quarter. Um, these are the block sizes. Transform method, DCT, um, whether it uses um, forward or backward prediction or both, um, and if it uses um, these uh, intra-predictions iframes.